You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Slary, and today we're talking about being a survivor in life. Ah, who hasn't been there, right? Something happens in your life and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to get through it. I don't know if I can, but you do. And it's because of that determination, that vigor, that fire that you have to get to the other side. And how do you be a survivor in life? That's what we're going to focus on today. Our inspirational guest, Donna Hartley, is going to come on in our next segment. Boy, is she a survivor. She's she survived a plane crash, cancer, you name it. So many different things that she'll share with us. But how did she do that? That's the thing. How? So we're going to focus on that today. We're also going to be taking your calls. Again, that number is 800-333-0001. And we're standing by to give you the coaching that you need to to get over that hump, get over that hurdle, and survive that. So, in fact, I'm getting word from our producer now that we have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. Awesome. So I'm caught in a dilemma. Um, I'm in a standoff with romance, I feel. Um, Whenever I'm in love, I express my heart fully. It's just in my nature, but it seems to be pushing my love interest away. And I always give my heart out without hesitation. And this has led me to hurt more than Mm. once and um, my question is does this mean i need to be more reserved against my own nature or also how can i be more careful with my heart or should i even be oh you know what that's a great question and first of all heartbreak is really hard to go through so i i I know what you've gone through i've been there um here's the thing the the people who you've approached who you've kind of gone after and and maybe they rejected your love or maybe they pushed back did they ever tell you why no they simply stopped communicating okay and out of any of those folks that you pursued were any of them for a lengthy amount of time or do you know any of their friends um not too many honestly the pattern was very short kind of Okay. Um, people that didn't live in the same town as me was a gotcha. pattern I identified with that. Gotcha. Okay. And the reason why I asked that question, just so you know where I was going with that, is even if somebody stops communicating, if you could, if you knew a friend of theirs and you could ask them, it's not that you're trying to get them back. It would just be finding out what happened because you don't know that it's you. Mm. First of all, who knows? Maybe mm-hmm. they were involved with another relationship. And that hadn't completed. Maybe something happened in their life, a financial disaster, who knows, a health issue. It may not be you. So that's the first thing I want you to acknowledge is that when someone stops communicating, that doesn't necessarily mean that you did something wrong. You get that? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. But secondly, it's really good to ask questions because that's how we find our way to who our, our, our best love interest is. You know, I've had different men that I've dated over time, and obviously I'm not with them, so relationships have ended for different reasons, and I've always been very curious. You know, sometimes I've recognized what was their fault, but I've always been very curious, how could I be better? Could I have been a better listener? Could I have been less judgmental? Could I have been whatever? And I think sometimes you want to ask. So the next time you're in a relationship where you do have some communication with them or it's lengthy enough where you can ask, do not that you're going to get that person back but it just gives you information as to your behavior in the relationship okay now my last Mm -hmm. thought for you is this you're meant to be with somebody and there could be multiple somebodies i don't believe that there's just one soulmate for everybody but it's finding that person that you can run with and you just haven't found them yet and you have to stay the course And there's a lot of people that look for love over their entire life. Their 20s go by, their 30s go by, their 40s go by, their 50s go by, and even so forth. And they're looking for that love. So you are not alone. And it's absolutely 
nothing that you've done wrong. Do you get that? And mm-hmm. I would keep putting yourself out there. Because I can yeah. tell you what, I hear in you a loving, confident person who, with the right partner, you're going to make them over the moon happy. Mm-hmm. Just got to find that right partner. Yeah. You know? So you don't think that I should um, stop giving my heart out so readily? Absolutely. That has seemed to hurt me in the past? Nope. Nope. Don't do a thing. Be signature you. <laughs> There's just one you and somebody will love and appreciate that. So if you try to modify yourself and you don't even know for sure if if that's, if that's really what it is, I wouldn't change a thing. But the next time you get into a relationship and if it doesn't work, but you both end kind of amicably, then I would ask that person, what could I have done differently? But at this point I would literally stay the course and just be you. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of it, right? It is. It's not hard to be you. You don't have to fake it. Just be you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and keep laughing. I love your laugh. It's beautiful. So thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much for your advice. It uh, was very helpful. You're very welcome. Have a great day. I love that she called in about that question because who hasn't been there? Oh, my heart breaks for her because it, it is a journey, but we're, we're all on it. I, I know tons of people in my life who haven't found that person yet and We're just looking, and that right person will come eventually. And I'm getting word from our producer that we will have another caller here on the line. Um, Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Thank you for calling in. I'm great. How can we help you today? So I am going to be moving to a new study and starting a new job, and I was wondering if you had any advice about how to juggle um, my relationship as I make that transition. Are, are they going with you or is it going to be long distance? They'll be staying here for a few months. They'll be long distance for that period. Okay. And then do they plan to join you? They do after a few months. Okay. And is this a relationship that you want to have work out? Like you want to be with them? Yeah, I definitely could see it going for, um, you know, a long, a long time. So I'm hoping that we can kind of make this as smooth a transition as we can. Okay. Okay. And that's my first question, because if you weren't sure, then that's a lot of energy to keep a long distance Mm -hmm. relationship going if you weren't sure. But if this is somebody that you see yourself with, then investing that energy is well worth it. And I think you just have to get creative. I believe that romance is, is, it's layered, right? I I love the idea of love letters and love emails, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and talk about how you want to keep this spicy, right? So you don't, you, you don't have to tell each other all the different romantic gestures you're <laughs> going to do, but hopefully your partner will, will do fun and creative things and you will as well. So let's just talk about what you could do, right? And maybe that person can yeah. take note and do the same thing. Love emails. Just a random email is great. Uh, send them a letter. Send them a postcard. Or when you see them have a card and sneak it somewhere, leave it at their place. So after you're gone, they see it, um, send them a care package of something signature to where you've moved to, to kind of get them excited for that move. Of course, you could always have date nights by phone or by video. You could even watch TV together. There's a lot of things that you could do to kind of keep this alive as if you're together. Um, but it really just takes that level of commitment. And, and I think you both have that. What is your biggest concern, though? I think just kind of keeping that quality time. I'll have a job that will keep me pretty busy, but I guess I didn't really think about, you know, still being able to watch TV shows together, maybe like over FaceTime. I think things, small things like that would really be pretty helpful. Absolutely. And you know what? Even in the morning, maybe you both agree, let's talk at 7.30 before our day gets crazy, 7.30 a.m. or 8 a.m. And just <laughs> yeah, agree that you're going to have idea. 10 agree that you're going to have 10 minutes to hear each other's voices and you kind of get revved up for the day. And maybe you're going to have busy lunches, so maybe that won't work, but maybe end of the day, Mm -hmm. maybe every Friday you guys have a happy hour by phone, you know, or whatever, (laughs) whatever that is. I mean, it's just finding that time and then trying to have that face-to-face time when you can. I don't know how far apart you guys will be either by, by just car or by plane, but it sounds like you have the love in your heart to make this happen and you will. The biggest thing is don't doubt yourself, have fun, give yourself completely to your job and to this relationship. And if you do that, 
it'll all work out. It's going to be busy, but it'll work out. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for all your advice. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for calling thank in. You, you too. And we're going to be coming back after this break with our inspirational guest, Donna Hartley. Today, we're talking about being a survivor, surviving these relationships, careers, changes in life. How do we do that? Well, that's what we're focusing on today. It's all about surviving, living full out, and putting a smile on that face, just like those callers, because life is worth it. So we'll be right back after this break. I am Nancy Soleri. This is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. Listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfulloutcom Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about being a survivor in life. And sometimes it just comes naturally given the circumstances that you have to survive. And other times it's really helpful to hear what others have done in case we ever encounter that same circumstance. And our inspirational guest today, Donna Hartley, she has been through it. Let me tell you, everything from plane crashes to cancer, you name it. And she's going to share with us her journey today and how she survived, but how she kept pressing forward. And that fire, that vigor that I'm talking about, the tenacity, the determination, she had that, but there's times that she lost it. There's times that she had to find it. And I know you do, too. So I'd like to welcome Donna to the show. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your show and have the opportunity to talk about my story. Well, thank you, Donna, so much. And there's so much to get to, so we'll just <laughs> jump right on in. You know, it's interesting. I have been on many, many planes uh, traveling for speaking and different things and vacations, and I always see the attendant do the, you know, the the thing they do in the beginning where they go through and they talk about the mask and that the seat is a flotation device. And and I kind of like look around and I don't think that people are paying attention, but we really should because you've been there. Can you tell us they about... They are not paying attention, let me tell no. you. And it's one of the things that saved my life. First of all, I survived, as you, as you know, a plane crash March 1st. 1978, it was a Continental DC-10 on takeoff from LAX going to Hawaii, and uh, it totally burned to the ground, the entire aircraft. Hmm. So, first of all, I'm a struggling actress in Hollywood. I have, um, I've given up, kind of, you know, I thought things weren't going to work after seven years, and financially, emotionally, spiritually, and but I was going back to Hawaii, because I'm a former Miss Hawaii. So, I said, let this change. Let this light change, you know, my life. I'm also a meditator. And when I went to check in, Nancy, I had this gut feeling and I changed my seat. I wanted an aisle seat and I was six rows from the exit. And when they gave all those instructions you're talking about, I counted the rows. I looked at the flight attendant. Yeah. And I was looking around and people were not paying attention. Mm -hmm. But 90 seconds later, I'm glad I did because of 167 miles per hour going down the runway. We exploded and burned to the ground. Well, and the thing that's so crazy about that, I mean, we see that in movies and here it's live for you. And when this is happening, fire everywhere, smoke filling the cabin. How do you instinctively even find your way out? I mean, you knew you were six rows to the exit, but you can't barely even see. I, you, no, you cannot see. And, um, but I knew the six rows so I could feel them. And there was a part of me that said, if I die today, I hadn't lived my life. Mm. I hadn't been the person I wanted to be. I hadn't been successful, but I didn't do the things I wanted to do. So I was 30 years old. I'm like, I, I want to do my life. And, um, I made it down the six rows. And let me tell you, there's people going down the same time you are. You are just jammed, you know, like inches. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the end, I had to go left to go out. But I fell to the right because the plane was on an angle. The left side was jacked up that we were jumping out. The right side was already burning to the ground. And I almost fell in those flames shooting in the window or the exit door at that time on the wrong side of the aircraft. I was on my hands and knees, and I had to scramble back. 
But at that moment, and sometimes it just takes a second in us mm. that we say, I'm going to give up or I'm going to survive. And I was mad at myself that I hadn't been who I wanted to be. And I said, give me the opportunity to make a difference with my life. And at that moment, I got the courage to drag myself up. I was the very last one to make it out before that evacuation slide exploded. Wow. But I get that. I get that conversation you had with that yourself and that crossroad moment because that's applicable to anything we do in life, right? It's really a choice, and we have yes. to fight for our life. And and at this point in your life, you almost were committing suicide. You were just you were really done. I mean, you were depleted in so many ways right. that if you hadn't had that hope and desire and the thought of things could be different, you could have just jumped in those flames. It would have been done. Right, because well, you were right. I was con- contemplating suicide, being such a struggling actress, no support from my family. You know, can I pay the bills when I come back from Hawaii? I don't even have rent money. And it was seven years of struggling. It wasn't just, you know, a couple months. So, yes, mm-hmm. suicide was on my mind. And at that moment, though, those flames, when I looked at that, I just said, I have to do something with my life. I was given this life. Mm-hmm. What have I done? Well, and what I really appreciate about your story is the timing of these events in your life, because there you were at 30, struggling actress, this plane crash happens, but then you took your life in a more positive way. You had always wanted to be a mother. It hadn't worked out. Relationships in and out, just they just didn't pan out, and you decided that you were going to adopt, but that also was not an easy road. No. I went through, well, I was in my 40s, and I was single, so I didn't fit that kind of pattern, and I was getting in my middle 40s, you know, and, um, but I, I went through the 11th adoption, accepted me after seven years, you know, wow. so seven years of applying and not working, and it was the 11th adoption, and let me tell you, I got the right daughter in the long run. She is like me. She is stubborn. She's determined. She's a go-getter. And she would have just probably worn any other mother down, you know? So how come you didn't give up? As long as I waited, and as difficult as it Uh was, because then my family didn't talk to me because they thought I was too old and I wasn't married and this wouldn't work out, so I had to do it all alone. Mm. So thank God I didn't, as I said, read the book, how difficult it was going to be. Yeah, Uh, because it was, you know, working, traveling, raising my daughter, getting help. And, um, you know, love comes in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And that package of love came in my daughter in a way I never expected to be loved or accepted. So did you finally feel like um, did you finally feel like your life had reached a level of purpose? Not perfect, but Mm -hmm. it was really in the direction I wanted. You know, the career then had to really slow down. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't perfect, but it was more fulfilled. Okay. I had a cat. I had my daughter. I had a house. I lived in the mountains, you know, so and the career is the one that suffered because something had to happen. Mm-hmm. And um, but, you know, I was I was very thankful. I was counting my blessings, you know, but it's, but it's interesting. Next, oh, you know. oh, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, though, because, you know, we can't take our awards with us. We can't take our money with us. And so it is really the impact that you made. And here you were able to make an impact with your daughter. And I mean, that's just really precious. And I know that there was a time that you were ice skating with her that really moved you and touched you. And I want to come back to that because I think that it's the moments we have with ourselves that allow us to be a survivor. So Donna, if you'll stay with us, we're going to come back and share that story when we get back. And for everybody listening today, this is Donna's story, but what are you surviving? What are you trying to overcome? And and in an effort to do so, know that you're not alone. Think of the people in your life that you can turn to for support, or just trust that gut instinct that you have. It's all about being a survivor today as we live full out. So stay with us. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be right back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. 
Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri, and today we're talking about being a survivor in life and and doing that, but doing it with that vigor and fire and spirit that we have. But it's not always easy given the circumstances, and our inspirational guest today is giving us her life journey of all the things that she survived, which is a lot. So we're going to jump right back into our interview today with Donna Hartley. Donna, welcome back to the show. Thank you. And we were talking about being at the ice skating rink with my daughter. Well, but before we get to that, I want you to share with our audience your next hurdle because it's the next hurdle that got you to the rink. So what did you experience next? What did life dish up to you in terms of well, your next I'm challenge? I'm raising my daughter. I'm single mm-hmm. mom. My mother has a stroke on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. I'm flying back. My dad on the West Coast dies. I have 11 deaths in family and relatives, and I'm not taking care of myself. So on March 1st, 2002, when I went to the dermatologist, they did a biopsy, and they called me that day, and it was stage 3 melanoma. And they said, make out your will, make sure everything's in line, and then we have to get you in for treatment. You know, that's not a good bedside manner. <laughs> that's that's very hopeless no, in the way that they delivered it to you. To, I know he was trying to shock me to say, this has to be done immediately. Right. You know? And he was right. I had to really get all my ducks in a row, and there was a time crunch here because melanoma is not a good cancer to have. I was a surfer in Hawaii. It was on my left thigh where I used to sit, you know, on the board out in the sun. But also I know it was a stress in my life and not taking care of myself, which really brought that cancer, you know, to the forefront. Well, and I'm glad you highlighted that because I think people take stress and they go, eh, you know, it, you know, it's just a little stress. But a lot, little stress here, little stress there does add up. And it's not to say that it's, absolutely what caused the cancer but i'm sure it didn't help and right. where i want sure to go to it so absolutely I, uh, I went to the mountain with my daughter i was mm-hmm. waiting to get into uc san francisco for surgery and i was on the wait list and my little daughter mariah was six years old at the time and uh, she said mommy i wish i had the boo-boo on my leg and i looked at her and said why mariah did you say that and she said then you'd be healthy. And I was so overwhelmed, Nancy. I said, just stay here. I'm going to go around the rink. And it was a beautiful day and white puffy clouds. And I looked up at the sky and I said, this is the deal. You know, I said, I signed up to raise his daughter. There's no place for her to go in the will. I have no one to raise her. Let me raise her. It wasn't about me. It was not about me. I did say a little side note after that is that I won't complain about the teenage years, but of course I've apologized (laughs) for that one ever since. But um, but that was the moment that I became committed that I was at Survivor. Remember I told you that sometimes it just takes that something because up till then I was I didn't know if I was going to live, you know. And at that moment I said I'm going to make it. I got to make it. Well, and, and I, I think that self talk Sunday, and I was in that Thursday for surgery, and they yeah. did three, three procedures on me. Wow, and I think that that self talk is important because sometimes you just have to say it out loud, and you have to say it with that intensity that this has got to happen, and not to internalize it, but to actually speak it out. And I'm so glad you did that, and you did get the surgeries, and you did overcome cancer, and for all intents purposes. You would have thought you were out of the clear, but then four right. years I had, later, yeah, I had, I had gone through enough. <laughs> right, but no, no, no. Four years later, life is like Donna. Here we go again. And what happened then? I couldn't believe it. I was feeling a little tired. You know, I'm a snow skier. I love to ski. I can ski like for hours and hours. I could make like a half a run. And I came in and I said something's wrong. And I kept getting this gut feeling that said, find a heart specialist, find a heart specialist. And I had to find a doctor. I, you know, that I didn't have a heart specialist. So it took me a while. I got one. I booked an appointment and I had no other symptoms, tired. And when I went into the doctor, 
uh, they did an echocardiogram, and my aortic valve, which is our main valve, is normally 2.5 centimeters squared. Mine was 0.6. At 0.5, you have a massive, massive heart attack. And I live in a small town, so I would have been airlifted out. Mm. So he said, you can't even leave this place. You have to. I'm going to give you some list of locations and doctors, and we have to call and schedule. You have to be in within 10 days on the operating table. Mm. And the operation occurred on March 1st, 2006. That was the third time. Now, I was very blessed to have a mentor named George that had passed on, but we would talk about life and philosophies and learning lessons and, you know, not beating ourselves up and self-talk. And he said, you have three major life lessons. And if you survive them, your destiny is to help people help themselves. Now, when he said survive, I thought, you know, a boyfriend breaking up with me or something. Not literally survive. So yeah. I was going into this Thursday, Thursday, you know, surgery, the third one, I didn't know if I had developed that kindness and that patience and that understanding and that love and that forgiving, all that comes with that. So I didn't know if I would survive that open heart surgery. Mm. You doubted yourself. What made you doubt yourself after all those two other times well, that you had survived? Like everybody else, you know, we want to think the best, but when it really mm. comes to that moment and we're really honest, we do reach deep down in our soul and we say, have we done enough? Yeah. You know, have we done enough? And, and I, I didn't know. I wanted to and, hope I did, but of course, we all have flaws. We all have faults. We all want to mm -hmm. be better at things. So, And know, when you well, did survive, obviously you vowed that you would serve and, and give back and love in a big way. But I'm just curious, Donna, because you have survived so many things. And there's going to be audience members listening now who are dealing with that heartbreak, dealing with losing their home, dealing with a health challenge, and they just they just don't believe. What can you say to them to help them have hope? Well, first of all, you can't listen. I turned off all the news, all the negativity in the world, and I went in for my truth. By that, I mean I prayed and I meditated. When we pray, we ask for help. When we meditate, we're quiet to hear the answers. I had very positive people around me, and I said, this is the only thing you're allowed to think about me, is perfect health, perfect surgery, perfect recovery. I did a vision like a vision board. I put this paper up all over the back of my dining room, and every time I had a negative thought or a fear, I'd write something on it positive. And I put pictures that I'm going to be able to spend Halloween with my daughter and Christmas you know, with my daughter, and we're going to be at the Christmas tree. And, you know, I, I visualized that there could be a future. You know, mm -hmm. I still doubted it and had some of my fears, but I visualized it stronger mm -hmm. than the fears were. And I always say visualizing is key. But did you ever grapple with the question of why me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, why me? Why me? But then, why me? Three things like that. And I had a tough life. You know, I came from alcoholism. I came from violence in my family. But if you are going to be a per person that is really going to go in your soul and you want to offer value to everyone you're around and yourself, sometimes the lessons come hard. Sometimes there's things you have to do. There was a moment with my brother when I was going in for surgery, and this was the cancer surgery, and I love my brother, and he was, you know, he's the only sibling I have, and he said, well, we're, I know, you're going to be back today after surgery, and we're getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and we're going up to the ski hill, and we'll drop you off at your home, and I, I wanted to yell at him. I wanted to argue with him, but if I had argued with him, I would have given him all my power, mm -hmm. and that's what people do when they're stressed. They either turn over the power to the doctors or power to people that are doubting. I looked at my brother and I said, okay. Now, I didn't get home till 12 that night. And he said we were leaving at 6 and I didn't wake up till 11 o'clock the next day. And I yelled and I go, is this 11 o'clock? My sister-in-law came in and she said, your brother didn't sleep last night. And I looked at him. I said, you were worried? And he shook his head. And sometimes that's the only thing you get from other people. That's why I say you have to surround the people that will support you at that time and also go in yourself. Now, I know my brother loves me, but he couldn't be there for me during Right, that. right. So now, that makes I would sense. Say to people is you've yeah. got to go in and you've got to find your inner strength. So, yes, I've gotten ticked off that all this stuff happened <laughs> to me. But now that I'm past it, 
I look at the depth and the compassion and the understanding that I can give to my audiences when I speak and to people when I meet them mm-hmm. because I've gone through it. I know their pain. Well, and as we close up this interview today, I, what do you think are the ingredients that someone needs to have within them to be a survivor? Like if they don't already have it yet, what do you need to have to get through cancer, to get through death, to get through plane crashes, you name it? I think they have to know that there's joy because they lose it all when you get so stressed. They have to know that there's laughter. They have to know that this is a lesson. They're being tested to see if they have that strength. See, I really believe that. And I had a daughter, and now I know why she came to me late in life. Because of her, I had that determination. I had a, a reason to live. There was no one else. And then she graduated from college this year, you know, and... So I think you have to find the reason. What Mm -hmm. do I want to do? What is my soul's purpose? And when you find that purpose, let me tell you, you're a survivor. And you say, I'm going to make it through and I'm going to complete what I came in this life for. Well said. And a survivor you are, Donna. I'm honestly, you just... You are a powerhouse, girl. You you looked that plane crash at the face and you said, I'm not dying. You looked cancer in the face. You said, I'm not dying. You looked at your heart valve and said, listen, I've been here before. You're not taking me. And, and, I, and I love that you have that attitude. But then outside that kind of posturing, harder core, there's this loving woman in the middle who just has been always searching for love and found it in her daughter And most of all, you found it in yourself. I think that's the real lesson of life is the love that you found that you could give away. So Uh, Nancy, I think think people don't look at the love of themselves because they don't love themselves and accept themselves. And through all that pain I had to go through and struggling, I learned to accept myself with all my flaws. Well, and, and Donna, have we have to close. When she yeah. comes up with me and she looks at my eyes, I go, Donna, Donna, we, we have to close up. But I really honestly thank you so much for being on today's show because uh, you're just you're just awesome. That's the best way to sum it up. And you're you're just a miracle, truly. But thank you for being on the show. And, and everybody, when we come back, we're going to be taking your calls. And it's all about being a survivor in your life. And how do you do that? How do you get through those hard times? But yet keep that hope and that love near and dear to your heart to get through it. It's all about being a survivor as you strive to live full out. So we'll be coming right back after this break. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. Circumstances, and you're not sure if you're ever going to make it or be what you want to be. Know that you can survive if you keep focused on having a vision for your life, what you want, what does it look like. If you do that, you will be able to get through the fire. You will have the tenacity and the determination to win, to go after life and live full out. listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out show. And today we've been talking about being a survivor in your life. And honestly, We all are survivors. We've all overcome a challenge, but sometimes they're going to be really big and we're going to feel as though we can't. We won't, but you will. You have to believe that you will. That's the thing. How you talk to yourself, what you say in your mind is super important in being a survivor of life. So I'm getting word from our producer that we have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help you today? Hi. Yeah, I'm just, I am a parent with my wife. Um, We're just trying to figure out how to get our kids to better listen to us. I got a three-year-old and a six-year-old. The big thing that I'm coming into is they listen pretty well to me, but they seem to kind of disrespect my wife a little bit and don't listen to her as well as they do to me. So I'm just trying to figure out a better way of maybe on my end to try to 
facilitate listening to her more so than to me because, you know, the gentleman in the, the household. So. Right, right. No, I get that. Now, are, who's who's good cop, who's bad cop in this family? Uh, I'm typically bad cop. <laughs> okay, okay. And she's yeah, good cop. Wife, she, usually my wife's the good cop in the family. Oh, okay. So what you all need to do is reverse roles. Okay. And that's not going to be easy. And in, and actually, I wouldn't even do it until she's ready. But at some okay. point, you want to pass the baton to her. She's bad cop. She's the discipliner. Okay. 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 You have to have them see her in the similar role that you're in now. They have to know that the way they talk to her has a consequence. Because they know if they talk to you that way, you would not put up with it. Time right. out. Grounded. Kibosh, right? They right. need to no, know. Definitely. Yeah, they need to know that she has that same backbone, that same discipline. And it's going to be really hard because you're going to bite your tongue a little bit, right? Because she might not initially do it the way you would do it, but you got to let her find her voice and find that that power. Does that make sense? And you're going to sure. kind of kick kick back and and. And it, again, I think it'll be very interesting for the kids to see those roles differently. They might actually learn to see you differently. They might learn to see you a little bit more nurturing even. Yeah, I could see that because I see sometimes when I open my mouth and it's not like a bad, a bad situation has happened. Uh, I see that both of my kids kind of shy away from me at first and then they realize that it's a good situation and then I'm praising them. So, okay, yeah, I can see that that should probably help that a little more. Right, because when, when, when she goes into mommy deeper, like discipline voice, they're going to know she means it and she's got to look at them. She's got to have the right tone. But then at the same time, you shouldn't burden on your shoulders all that discipline either. Like you should be able to be fun. They should be able to hear your voice and come running to you, not running away from you. You know what I mean? Right. No, I understand. Yeah. 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 But it's hard. I mean, you're surviving (laughs) being a father and there's, don't we wish there was a manual, right? Go to page 65 to figure out how to turn the tides and have the, you know, the children respect your wife more. But is that something you think you can try? Yeah, I think that's definitely something that we could definitely try to work in. Um, The thing is, is that I guess that I also would have another question on that with would be, is she's a little bit more of the Oriental background um, with being from the Orient and how Mm -hmm. she was raised. So she's a little bit more soft on that end so is there something that i might suggest to her to maybe i guess get that that deeper voice or maybe that parental voice in well what being what you could side? yeah you know what you could do you could watch movies and i don't know exactly if, which movies off the cuff you'd have to think about strong mother roles movies where there's been strong mothers maybe they've been single mothers maybe they had a, a husband but I think if she could watch that and like see it in play, like that could help. Or even okay. if you found certain, I bet if you Googled this, I bet other people have had the same challenge. Because I get what you're saying. It's not in her demeanor to be forceful, to be demanding, right? But I right, think exactly. actually, but I think the biggest gift that you could give each other as a couple is to always lift each other up and challenge each other and make each other stronger. So I think right there, you're giving her the gift in in helping her to evolve as a person, as a woman. So I really appreciate you calling in today. I hope that advice was helpful. And we'll definitely be thinking of you and your family. Yep. Thank you very much. I think that will be definitely something different for us to do. And I think it will be something nice to try. So it's different and something different and nice to try. Keeps life spicy. Keeps life spicy. Exactly. Thank you so much. And and I want to thank everybody who called in today and our inspirational guests. And honestly, we're all here dedicated to helping you live full out. It's all about being a survivor in life. We'll see you next week. Take care. We believe in you. Live full out. See you later.
Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out. Thank you for watching the Living Full Out YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you're interested in the content we provide, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Now for more inspirational content, click the video on the right to get to know me, Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show and certified life coach in more detail. Click the video on the left and you'll be motivated by the Living Full Out Radio Show and our inspirational guests and callers. Keep in mind, we welcome your comments. If you're empowered, let us know. Feel free to leave a comment. We would enjoy hearing from you. And here's to you, living your life full out.